going on, everybody? This is Naz Jirachi here on another fine, fine evening, coming at you today with one of my favorite topics. What are we talking about today? We're going to talk about the origin of Dragon Ball. So Dragon Ball is one of my favorite television shows. I started watching it when I was very young. I remember coming home from school to catch it on TV when I got home. And needless to say, I've just always loved it. It's huge, and I know tons of other people love it too. So I figured everyone might appreciate knowing the true backstory and the inspiration for this, this very, very powerful series. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit you with just a quick introduction, which many people might already know, and then we're going to dive right into the juicy backstory. So what is Dragon Ball? Dragon Ball is a Japanese manga series that was written and illustrated by Akira Toriyama. It was originally serialized in the Weekly Shonen Jump from 1984 to 1995. It had 519 individual chapters that were published into 42 volumes. Dragon Ball was initially inspired by the classical Chinese novel Journey to the West. And we're going to dive into that for a good portion of this video and cover what that is. But we're going to move forward here real quick. The series follows the adventures of our hero, Son Goku, from his childhood through adulthood, as he trains in martial arts, explores the world in search of the Dragon Balls, and obviously creates a family as well. Now the Dragon Balls we all know allow you to summon a dragon when, when all seven of them are gathered that will grant you, at the very minimum, one wish. And along his journey, Goku makes several friends and battles a wide variety of villains and many of them are also in search of the Dragon Balls. The Dragon Ball manga, 42 volumes, have been adapted into two anime series which were produced by Toei Animation. We know them as Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Together they were broadcast in Japan from 1986 to 1996 and additionally the studio has developed 19 feature films and three television specials as well as two anime sequel series, Dragon Ball GT, which ran from 96 to 97, and Dragon Ball Super, which started in 2015 and is still currently going. There was also Dragon Ball Kai as a side thought, which was just a removal of a lot of filler material. There's been collectible card games, video games, soundtracks, action figures, tons of media, and tons of content that Dragon Ball has spawned over the years. Since its release, Dragon Ball has become one of the most successful manga and anime series of all time. The 42 volumes sold over 156 million copies in Japan and more than 240 million copies worldwide, making it the third best-selling manga series in history. Reviewers have praised the art, the characterization, and the humor of the story, and as I just said, it is widely regarded as one of the greatest manga series ever made and it has inspired many other artists who have gone on and produced very popular animes such as Ichiro Oda from One Piece, Masashi Kishimoto from Naruto, and a couple of people from Bleach, Rave Master, Fairy Tail, and Black Cat as well, citing Dragon Ball as a main source of inspiration for their works. The anime as well, Dragon Ball Z, is also highly popular in various countries and is arguably one of the most influential factors in boosting the popularity of Japanese animation in Western culture. So that was the introduction, guys. Many of you probably already knew that stuff. Some of you didn't, but uh, hopefully this next part can uh, get you guys really enlightened to, to some of the backstory and the inspiration behind Dragon Ball. So Akira Toriyama loosely modeled Dragon Ball on that classic Chinese novel I mentioned, A Journey to the West. What is A Journey to the West? A Journey to the West is a Chinese novel that was published in the 16th century during the Ming Dynasty. It is one of the four great classical novels of Chinese literature. In English-speaking countries, the work is known as Monkey and was an abridged translation made by Arthur Whaley. The novel itself is an extended account of the legendary pilgrimage of a Tang Dynasty Buddhist monk named Zhuanzang who traveled to the western regions 
that is Asia and India, to obtain Buddhist sacred texts, otherwise known as sutras. He returned after many trials and much suffering. This story retains the broad outline of Zhuangzang's own account, the Great Tang Records on the Western Regions, but the Ming Dynasty novel adds elements from folk tales and the author's invention, that is, the Gautama Buddha gave Zhuangzang three protectors who agreed to help him as an atonement for their sins. And this is crucial because these disciples are Sun Wukong, Zhu Baiji, and Sha Wujing. Now, out of those three, Sun Wukong is the most important because he's the inspiration for our very dear Son Goku. So who is Sun Wukong? as the main inspiration for Goku that kind of makes him almost the main inspiration for the entire series. Sun Wukong, also known as the Monkey King, is a mythological figure who is featured in many many legends, most of which can be traced back to the period of the Song Dynasty. He is as well, as we mentioned, a main character in the novel A Journey to the West. Sun Wukong is also found in many later stories and adaptions. In the novel, A Journey to the West, he is a monkey born from a stone who acquires supernatural powers through Taoist practices. After rebelling against heaven and being imprisoned under a mountain by the Buddha, he accompanies a monk Zhuangzang on a journey to retrieve Buddhist sutras from India. So basically, he is a monkey humanoid who is born from a stone that fell from heaven and he possesses supernatural powers. So what are they? He possesses immense strength. He is able to lift his 17,550 pound staff with ease. He is also extremely fast, able to travel 13,468 miles in a single somersault. Sun knows 72 transformations, which allow him to transform into various animals and objects. However, he is troubled in transforming into other forms outside of those 72 because of the incomplete transformation of his tail. Sun Wukong is a skilled fighter capable of holding his own against the best warriors of heaven. Each of his hairs possess magical properties capable of being transformed into clones of the Monkey King himself and or into various weapons, animals, and other objects. He knows spells to command wind, part water, conjure protective barriers against demons, and freeze humans, demons, and gods alike. One of the most enduring Chinese literary characters, Sun Wukong has a varied background and colorful cultural history. His origin is from the white monkey legends from the Chinese Chu Kingdom of 700 to 223 BC. These legends gave rise to the stories and art motifs during the Han Dynasty, eventually contributing to the Wat rise of the Sun Wukong figure. Sun Wukong was originally developed as a Taoist immortal before being incorporated into Buddhist myths. He is considered by some scholars to be influenced by elements of both Chinese folklore and the Hindu deity Hanuman from the Ramayana. So that's Sun Wukong. He has obviously been depicted in a lot of other video games like Smite and uh, League of Legends, I believe, but he is the monkey character uh, with a tail. He has the extending pole that can resize and uh, travels on a cloud as well, I believe. So from all those things, we can really put together a lot of Goku's characteristics with the power pole, the tail, the transformation into the giant ape form, uh, the flying nimbus, his fighting prowess and immense strength. So obviously we can see everything's kind of coming together with uh, our inspiration for Goku. So back to Akira Toriyama, he also redeveloped not only from Journey to the West, but from his 1983 one-shot manga Dragon Boy. He has said that the fighting was influenced from movies by famous martial artist actor Jackie Chan as he wanted to create a story with the basic theme of Journey to the West but with a little kung fu. Since it was serialized in a shonen magazine, 
he added the idea of Dragon Balls to give it a video game-like activity of gathering something, without thinking of what the characters would actually wish for once they succeeded. With Goku being Sun Wukong, Bulma as Zuan Zhang on the quest to retrieve the item, Oolong as Zhu Baji, and Yamcha being Xiao Wujing, he originally thought that the series would last about a year and end once the Dragon Balls were collected. Toriyama stated that although the stories are purposefully easy to understand, he specifically aimed Dragon Ball at readers older than those of his previous series, Dr. Slump. He also wanted to break from the Western influences common in Dr. Slump, deliberately going for the Chinese scenery, referencing Chinese buildings, and photographs of China his wife had bought, brought. The island where the Tenkaichi Budokai is held is modeled after Bali, which he and his wife and assistant visited in mid-1985, and for the area around Babadi's spaceship, he consult consulted photos of Africa. It was when the Tenkaichi Budokai Martial Arts Tournament began that Dragon Ball truly became popular. Having recalled the races and tournaments in Dr. Slump, and anticipating the readers would expect Goku to win the tournaments, Toriyama had him lose the first two while planning an eventual victory for Goku. He had stated that Muscle Tower and the Red Ribbon Army storyline was inspired by the video game Spartan X, in which enemies tend to appear very fast. He then created Piccolo Daimo as a truly evil villain, and as a result of that creation, he called that arc the most interesting to draw on Dragon Ball. Once Goku and company had become the strongest on Earth, they turned to extraterrestrial opponents, including the other Saiyans and Frieza, who forcibly took over planets to resell them. Now, it should be interesting to note that when Dragon Ball was first created, the Saiyan race was not fully fleshed out. You know, Goku was inspired by Sun Wukong, who was a single deity, the Monkey King. So, that entire race of Saiyans was not thought of until later. During that time when the Saiyan and Frieza sagas were being created, it was a time of the Japanese economic bubble, and it was inspired by real estate speculators, who Toriyama called the worst kind of people. Finding the escalating enemies difficult, he created the Ginyu Force to add more balance to the series. After the Frieza saga, he added in time travel, but said he had a hard time with it, only thinking of what to do that week, and having to discuss it with his second editor, Yu Kondo. After Cell's death, Toriyama intended for Gohan to replace Goku as the series' main protagonist, but he felt the character was not suited for the role, and he then quickly changed his mind. Going against the normal convention that the strongest characters and should be the largest in terms of physical size, he designed many Dragon Ball characters, especially the most powerful, with small statures, including Goku. Toriyama later explained that he had Goku grow up as a means to make drawing fighting scenes easier, even though his initial editor, Kazukiko Torishima, was initially against it because it was rare to have a main character of a manga series change drastically throughout the series. When including fights in the manga, Toriyama had the characters go to uninhabited locations to avoid difficulties in drawing residents and destroyed buildings. Toriyama said that he did not plan the details of the story, resulting in strange occurrences and discrepancies and continuity errors later in the series. Some of these included the changing colors of characters mid-story, and a few characters having screen tone because he found it difficult to use. Since the completion of Dragon Ball, Toriyama has continued to add to its story, mostly in the form of background information on its universe through guidebooks published through Shushia. During the second half of the series, Toriyama has said that he became more interested in coming up with the actual story as opposed to drawing it, and that the battles became more intense with him simplifying the lines. His cover for this was that, in 2013, he stated, Because Dragon Ball is an action manga, the most important aspect is its sense of speed. So drawing very elaborate and detailed frames was not as necessary. 
He also once said that his goal for the series was to tell an unconventional and contradictory story. In 2013, commenting on Dragon Ball's global success, Toriyama said, Frankly, I don't quite understand why it happened. While the manga was being serialized, the only thing I wanted, as I kept drawing, was to make Japanese boys happy. The role of my manga is to be a work of entertainment through and through. I dare say, I don't even care if my works have left nothing behind as long as they have entertained their readers. And that's a pretty humble thing to say, you guys. And that's pretty much all there is to it. That was the main inspiration for Dragon Ball as we know it today. Now, of course, as time progressed, you'll see many other influences in Dragon Ball, like he's admitted that he was a huge fan of like 80s action movies, so you'll see references to characters like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. Uh, he as well was hugely influenced by American culture, which is why especially if you see during the Cell Saga, some of the designs of the cities, and as well, Cell was borrowed partially from the movie Aliens, which is a H.R. Geiger creation. So Toriyama was also influenced by Mr. Geiger, who was a brilliant and twisted designer. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little dive into Dragon Ball history and backstory. I hope I could provide you with some information that you might have never known about Dragon Ball. And as a fan myself, I feel like it's the least I can do to, to help spread the love and the knowledge that is Dragon Ball and as always a huge thanks to Akira Toriyama because your creations have definitely been a huge influence in my life growing up and something that I will always remember fondly and as well look forward to with Super still coming out. If you guys like this video feel free to give me a thumbs up if you didn't like it feel free to give me a thumbs down and no matter what your opinion was, feel free to throw up any information that you might know of or any questions or comments down below. As always, you guys have a great day, and I'll catch you next time. Later.